How's it going, tiny little hot dog cuties? Ben here, and today we are going to be talking about one of probably the coolest things I've seen a doctor do for their patients so far because I haven't had that much exposure to other doctors as much as I would if I was either a third or fourth year medical student. So we're going to put parentheses so far on that title. And the reason why I'm making this video is because I feel that a lot of medicine is very static. People tend to repeat things that have been going on for years, but I'm always looking. And I think every medical student, pre-med, nursing student, any people, anyone in their profession, they should, they should follow the old traditions, but they should always be looking for new and improved ways to make their jobs easier and if you're dealing with customer service like medicine or law how to make your clients or patients or uh, customers whatever it is that you're doing more comfortable and more aware so they get the best service possible so that's my personal philosophy and that's why I'm sharing these instances with you guys and it's always super refreshing to tell a story where a doctor is using new and improved ways to make patients' lives easier. Because let's be honest, guys, the one of the biggest problems we have with our physicians is that sometimes there is not a clear form of communication. And that usually has to do with organization or that a lot of doctors because they're in the me in the medicine zone all the time they tend to use uh, a lot of medical jargon a lot of um, things that they think as simple easy uh, to understand but it may not be that way for patients and sometimes we get a little bit caught up in our own world so we don't see the world through the patient's eyes. Sometimes we need to really simplify things in layman's terms, but you, you get so caught up in it. So I always appreciate a doctor when they go out of their way to make their patients' lives easier. So that's why today I'm going to be sharing one specific example that I have seen during my clinical preceptorships. So what a clinical preceptorship is, is that if you, let's say you're a pre-med student, a lot, a lot of pre-med students go and shadow doctors. What they do is they sit in the back of the room and just watch the doctor interact with their patients just to see whether or not they are a good fit for their profession. But when you're a pre-med student, you're kind of just there but not there. You just sit back and relax and you pretend that you basically have no interaction with anything else. When you're doing your clinical preceptorships, however, it's very similar to the shadowing that you do as a pre-med because you're getting exposure to other doctors, their styles, and their specialties. But at the same time, there is a more active involvement in that setting because of the fact that, one, you are getting exposure to medical treatment and how to treat patients. And yes, you're not the best. And honestly, to, to be honest with you guys, I don't think I've learned as much as doctors should learn by, yet because I'm only through my first semester in medical school. But it allows you to have more of an interaction with the patient and the doctor. You can answer questions, you can ask questions, you can write down notes, you can contribute to the conversation. I actively try to converse with the patient when I'm in my preceptorship. So there's a more of a dynamic between the doctor and the medical student other than shadowing. So. In one of my specific clinical preceptorships, I saw a doctor do something that I found to be incredibly, incredibly innovative. And I think, I think more doctors sh should be doing this. And I, after seeing what he did, I think I'm going to implement that into my practice when I become a physician. So to give a little background, this doctor is an oncology and hematology physician. So he primarily deals with patients who have one blood disorders or two cancer. And those two diseases tend to be very complicated and require lots of different kinds of medication. Sometimes it's very hard for patients to keep up with the kinds of medications that they are getting prescribed, but they just take it as instructed. But they don't really read too much into it or they don't know how to in interpret what's 
in the little speech blurb about the medication because it uses, again, very high-level medical jargon that not everyone knows about. So this doctor, he is so amazing. I wish I could shout him out, but I think it's more professional of me to not and keep his pra practice and his privacy anonymous because he's just a, he's such a great doctor. But while I was shadowing this hematology oncology doctor, um, it was going on smoothly as always. He was really good at the conversations he was having with patients. He laughed, he joked. You would think that in an oncology, a cancer clinic, you they, it will be sad and grim all the time, but that's technically not how it is. A lot of the patients are in a good mood, and yes, if there's bad news, you have to be more somber, but like all humans, regardless of what situation we're in, we always try to find the fun in things. So he was already... He was already a pretty awesome doctor, in my opinion, because of how cheery, fun, relatable he was to his patients. But then, then I saw him do something that I was like, wow, I can't believe more doctors are doing this. So, do you guys know those things that you sit on when you visit the doctor's office? That little chair seat thing, and then there's that pl plastic sheet or a really cheap paper towel sheet that goes over it so that every time that there's a new patient they can rip it off and then draw in another one so another patient can sit on it so there's less exposure to like germs bacteria and things like that well what he was doing is that he was using it in a way that i have never seen before but i it was just like like i can't believe i can't believe like other people haven't thought of this so when he's explaining conditions and medications to patients, what he would do is he would not actually sit them down on that sheet. He would ask them to sit down in another chair that's in the room. Unless he's examining the patient, he's not going to ask them to sit on that table with the sheet. So what he did is that he was explaining this, um, this cancer drug to a patient, and obviously the patient does not have a medical background and I doubt they know all the genes terms and anything like that associated with the drug that he's trying to prescribe her so what he does is that he lifts that seat he lifts it up he pulls the sheet down he takes out a marker and begins to write on that sheet just like a whiteboard he begins to write on it clearly explaining every single thing that the patient needs to do to take this medication, what the medication does, the side effects, and things like that. He was clearly outlining it on, on that sheet. And it was so crazy to me. It was so innovative because people, when they see things visually, they're better able to remember. Another huge problem I personally have as a patient when I visit doctor's offices is that they just spew out all the information to me verbally and like it goes in one ear and out the other. Like that's literally what happens. Can you imagine, like imagine how many times a doctor told you something, it, it, it went in one ear and out the other and you can't even remember what the doctor told you because it's all verbal. But this doctor was taking his time and writing every single detail every single detail on that sheet making it easy to remember very easy to visualize and then he would ask them do you have any questions and if they have any questions he will he will write it down and it wasn't just writing he would draw out how the medication touches this receptor on the cell and what that medication does does it go in the cell does it go out of the cell does it kill the cell and it was just crazy guys i can't believe none of us like we have we don't see that often with other doctors and it was so so nice of him for to do cuz i could see the patients sitting there just just taking it all in and being able to understand every single thing that he was saying and it wasn't even a one time thing every single patient that he saw that day if they had any questions if he had to do any any in-depth explanations of anything he would take down that sheet and give them a visual on what they had to do. One thing, though, I wish, I wish he offered the patient is for them to take a picture, a picture of those diagrams so they can take it home with them because it doesn't reveal any personal information or anything like that. It's basically giving them a mini lesson 
on whatever drug that they're taking or procedure that they may need to take. And I think that would be great if the patient could take a picture. Uh, but I think he was in a rush and obviously I was watching over him so he may have other things on his mind because like when you have so many so much stimuli around you you might forget what's happening but it was pretty amazing and I encourage everyone anyone who's going into a profession where it deals with people especially people who are in pre-med or in medical school think about how to make the lives of your customers clients and patients easier and ways that you can they can understand what you're trying to tell them better because a lot of people unfortunately unfortunately do not get a higher education they are middle class or they're lower income and to be honest a lot of people just don't care about medicine that much I mean we focus so much on medicine like I love medicine my classmates love medicine but the large majority of people don't really care there's lots of educated people that probably would not know a single thing that I'm telling them if I'm using medical jargon to them. So the large majority, regardless of race, ethnicity, social status, socioeconomic income, don't really understand high medical vocabulary. And it's our job as physicians, as future physicians, to better explain what they need to do for themselves because they need to help themselves. So in the end, it gave me an idea on how I wanted to run my practice. I don't think I'm going to have the sheet method, but I think in my practice, I will do everything in my power to make sure every single one of my examination rooms have a whiteboard, a marker, and an eraser. And I will just write everything that the patient needs to know on that whiteboard and I'll allow them to take a picture of it so they can take it home with them and remember why it is that they're taking what they are taking and how to take it. I think it's such a such an innovative way. I can't believe no one else is doing this. It's kind of blows my mind. I mean like <laughs> it's kind of crazy guys. So let me know what you guys think of this story. Did you like it? Did you do you want to hear more stories like this? And of course this is the coolest thing I've seen a doctor do so far parentheses. I hope more doctors are doing more cool things and I'll be really really happy to share with you guys what they're doing so that we can become better physicians, better workers, because you can apply whatever I'm sharing with you guys to whatever profession that you're in. And I think that's the magic of living in humanity, living in civilization. I love you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, share this video, follow me on my social media accounts. Be sure to ask me any questions that you have. I'll try my best to answer them even with my busy schedule. And until next time, this has been... Much love to you guys. Much love.